learning the anatomy from the heart is obviously a really important thing. And when you get these basics down on this structure, um, it's, it's, a, it's a real sense of accomplishment in terms of knowing where things flow, how things work, and what's responsible for what. One thing, though, about just the heart model is that right here and right here, we sort of lose a little bit in terms of what's actually happening. You've heard me say in other videos that deoxygenated blood goes out and oxygenated blood comes back and that the same thing happens on this side, but you really can't see it happening on this model. It's hard to picture, which is why I bring to you, yes, the cardiorespiratory anatomy model. I love this one. Honestly, this is a really cool model. So what we have here is not just the heart, but we have, I'm tapping against this right here and this right here, areas that represent where our right and left lungs are, respectively. So when you look at this entire thing, you really get a sense for it's not just the heart. You get a sense for how this fits into the bigger system. So it's not just the cardiovascular system. It really works very closely with the respiratory system, which is what I'm going to start to describe here. So before I do this, let me first take these uh, plastic parts off that represent the lungs. I first removed the left lung. This is now uh, the right lung that I'm taking off. This is an anterior view, so we know that we're looking at the front side of this thing. Now let me start from some of the basics that we've talked about before, just to be sure everybody's oriented in the same place. And honestly, the easiest way that I always do this is going through blood flow. So remember, blue represents deoxygenated blood flow, red represents oxygenated blood flow. So we have the superior vena cava, doesn't show up, but on the bottom side here, you'd have inferior vena cava leading into right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary trunk out to the lungs. I'm going to explain what's happening here and here in a moment, but you know that there's a gas exchange and then oxygenated blood comes back from the left pulmonary veins and over here in red, the right pulmonary veins both sides leading to this structure right here, left atrium, left ventricle, and then up and out the aorta. And this is where we start to deliver blood to the rest of the body. So very basically, right atrium, right ventricle to the lungs, left atrium, left ventricle to the body. So a couple other things that make this model so neat. First of all, you see the diaphragm. That's this muscly tissue on the bottom here. The diaphragm is that arced shape muscle that sits on the bottom side of our heart, the inferior side, and the, the bottom side of our thoracic cage for that matter. All right. Another structure you'll see right here is this. So this is your windpipe. We call it the trachea. And what happens here, if I spin this around and show you this side now, you can see that this trachea the tissue in white here is going to come all the way down and start branching, branching, branching into what will be areas of the left lung and the right lung. So what you see here are a couple different colors. You'll see blue representing deoxygenated blood flow. You'll see red representing oxygenated blood flow. And then you'll see the white bronchial tree. And I'm going to explain how this works in a moment here. But just, just so you can keep in mind, this is I know it looks a little bit complicated, but this is really what we're looking at. And in very, very simply put, because it's a lot more complex than this, what we have is oxygen coming in when you inhale or you take a breath in, and then carbon dioxide when you exhale is what's leaving, okay? Again, it's much more complex and not quite as simple as that, but for our purposes, that's, that's where we are, okay? So let's talk about this in a little bit, little bit more detail. So instead of starting at superior vena cava, let's actually talk about what happens up in our neck. We have our right internal jugular vein. We have our right subclavian vein. 
and that leads into the right brachiocephalic vein. And on this side, we have our left internal jugular vein. We have our left subclavian vein, and that's what leads into the left brachiocephalic vein. This then goes into superior vena cava. Remember, we're draining the bottom side of the body as well, but this is just representing the top side. So right brachiocephalic, left brachiocephalic vein, and that leads into superior vena cava. That deoxygenated blood then goes into the right atrium, right ventricle, and then it comes up the pulmonary trunk. Now when it goes to the pulmonary trunk, it's then heading out to the lungs. So this would be the left pulmonary artery coming on this side. And that's what leads into these left pulmonary arterioles, these little blue structures, these blue tubes that you see coming here. Now what happens at this level? Again, to simplify it, basically we are bringing in deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Okay, so deoxygenated blood is coming into the lungs. The carbon dioxide that's in this blood here is at the capillary level going to jump into our bronchial tree. So we'll see these left bronchi here, and again, way, way down at a microscopic level. You'll learn about it later. That carbon dioxide here jumps into here. That's the carbon dioxide that travels all the way up and out as we exhale. That's carbon dioxide leaving our body. Now, when you inspire or inhale and take a breath in, you have oxygen available here. That oxygen that's also in this bronchial tree is what's going to jump into these red lines. Now, these red tubes, you know, are the pulmonary venules, these small ones, which will eventually lead to the larger pulmonary veins. We have them on the left side. We also have them on the right side. Because please keep in mind, when I say right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary trunk to the lungs, I'm not just talking about what happens in the left lung here. Just as you have the left pulmonary, uh, pardon me, the, the, the left pulmonary art artery coming off this pulmonary trunk, leading out this way, we also have, because it splits, the right pulmonary artery, which is kind of tucked under here, but that's what's leading to these blue branches out here. This is what's going into the right lung. And again, same gas exchange is going to happen. And just as we have the right pulmonary artery here, we have right pulmonary veins, tiny little venules, and then veins. So you'll see one of them here. You'll probably see another one of them here on the right side. These both lead into this structure here. That's our left atrium. Just as these pulmonary veins on the left side are going to lead in. So again, right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary trunk to the lungs. And here's where we split. We have a left pulmonary artery. Those are the blue lines that are coming out. We have a right pulmonary artery. These are the blue lines coming out here. We make our gas exchange, drop off carbon dioxide, pick up oxygen, and then that oxygen travels back on these, from, from the bronchi on this side to the bronchi on this side. That oxygen jumps in and travels back on these pulmonary veins, right pulmonary veins, left pulmonary veins. Remember, arteries away from the heart, veins to the heart. Now we have oxygenated blood. And that oxygenated blood then goes left atrium, left ventricle, and then it goes past the aortic semilunar valve, which would be under here, and then up and out the aorta. And at the top of the aorta, you'll remember, we have these three tubes that lead off the top here. The brachiocephalic trunk, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. So... There are three tubes here, but we've got to go to four different places. We've got to go to both sides of our necks and out our arms. Well, if we look at these two, these two kind of explain where they're going. That left common carotid artery that you see here is the one that continues up. Left common carotid artery goes up like this. This left subclavian artery is going to come out like this and, and come out here and do just that go subclavian, subclavicular, under your clavicle. You remember your collarbone. That, but this brachiocephalic trunk 
if you think about the word, brachio means brachium, comes from the term brachium, meaning arm. Cephalo means head. So sure enough, if we follow this one up, it's going to split. And you can sort of see how that splits right around here. And what we have here is a right common carotid artery. That's just opposite of that left common carotid artery. And just as we had a left subclavian artery, we are also going to have a right subclavian artery. So blood is going to go up and out, not just to our left side and left arm, left side of the head and left side of the arm, but this brachiocephalic is going to split into the right side of the head or right side of the neck and the right arm there.